Uh, I, I joined a prog rock group called Asia, and this is the album I did with them. It's called Asia Arena. In the the that nice. Yeah, well, um, I booted him out. <laughs> so, st no, he took off Steve Howe, so I stepped in after Steve Howe left. Uh, was that Carl Palmer, another great drummer, yeah, Carl Palmer, yeah. myself, and, and a few of the few of the Reds, and John Wetton. Um, this album I played some guitar on, Illumination for Weller, and then I did... I forgot about this, and that's the reason I put it on this slide. I actually remixed a track from Manic Street Preachers, and I forgot. <laughs> but this is the single, Let Robson Sing. And uh, I listened to it, and I thought, them guitars are rubbish, I took all these guitars off. <laughs> put on. <laughs> no, they weren't rubbish, I just wanted to take the track in a different direction um, in this kind of direction you know and I didn't want the guy on the computer to start doing the editing I didn't want him to start going well it should delay like this and it should feedback like that so I can do that you know as you saw before you know I was I can I can play stuff and make it kind of <laughs> you know I can do my own feedback effects as such or, or or reverse stuff as I'm playing. <laughs> I mean, delay effects and reverbs as I've shown you. Um, but anyway. And then I started getting awards for doing nothing. <laughs> I don't know what I was... <laughs> the guy phones you up and says, oh, you've been nominated for the Pakistani Achievement Awards and can you turn up at the Com uh, you know, Commonwealth and wh wherever the India House, anyway, is the Commonwealth is near 10 Downing Street, isn't it? And they give you a piece of glass and you're like, rrr, rrr, nice one, mate. <laughs> 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 a whole bunch of guys sat there <laughs> in the suits and yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. And, uh, and you're like, yeah, top one, mate, cheers. <laughs> 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 top one's this tonight, you know. Uh, your missus is looking sweet, Bob. <laughs> but what else can you do, you know? <laughs> then you're starting to get on magazines and stuff. There's, there's me half with Bill Slash. <laughs> you know, this is the kind of, you start running these adverts and you're, you're being associated with. That's another thing, you know, in, you, in terms of your work, the association sometimes can help you. And I don't mean that you should go overboard to like stunt, you know, photobomb people <laughs> in pictures and whatever. But I mean, be clever about who you're working with and think about uh, is it advantageous or is it detrimental to your brand and, and to what you're doing in the music you're doing and things like that. But I mean, I didn't choose that, but it Marshall led to it. So there on magazine, it started leading to, you know, these thick kind of things. Um, Adverts, stupid face. <laughs> but um, I'll show you this ad because when I wrote the songs for the first Ian Brown album, Unfinished Monkey Business, I started using um, the Four Trap Port Studio on tape. And I wrote Unfinished Monkey Business on a cassette tape. <laughs> the very actual master is a cassette tape. And uh, so I, I was doing this advert to show kids that you can make music that can sell and make you money out of the most, uh, an affordable item, like, you know, uh, 80 quid, 90 quid, port a studio and a cassette. As uh, so we were talking about phones and things like that, you know, for writing with. Um, again, more adverts and all the top dogs are there. And then somehow this kid from Longsight's in there too, next to Ingve Malmsteen from Sweden, you know, the fastest for pin neoclassical geezer there's me i told you sticking out like a sore thumb in some award ceremony and they're all bored out off their heads so my life was like this you know just every room was just guitars for me <laughs> I just ended up people giving me guitars and whatnot and this is in jerusalem uh, the next show uh, with the british council this is actually in jerusalem the old city playing for these little kids and it took me about three hours to get through um all the uh, the security and the Israeli forces stopping me from getting in. They won't let me pass. And oh no, you got to take those shoes off and you got to <laughs> take the tires off your wheels and of your car. You got to carry that shit and all this kind of thing. It's crazy, crazy world. But when I actually got into the old city in Jerusalem, it's like whoa, check this out. This is like, this is history. <laughs> this is where all his faith began. You know, and you can see the, the tomb of Jesus up there and whatnot, and it's amazing place Jerusalem it's such a shame you know the politics and there's this these poor people in there and they got they get nothing a little bit of entertainment if it gets through <laughs> and that's reality that's not 
propaganda or the newspapers. This is just a musician telling you it was they destroyed my gear going through security. And then when I got there, whatever I had that still worked, it took me ages, but I got through into this little, uh, um, the center of Jerusalem, the old city, where the Palestinians still are, or the British are diminishing as they lose their rights to the houses and they're um, playing for these kids, just happy as, oh, you know, to get music or get a band playing for them, something else. That's just on the rooftop, looking out across Jerusalem. Um, so that's the Sarod, that's the instrument I, I'm teaching myself off YouTube. But that's YouTube for you, eh? YouTube can teach you everything. Um, it's an awesome instrument, just fantastic. It really tells you about acoustics, about reverb, how resonance and drones and how sympathetic strings work together to create natural reverb when you don't... To amplify it is almost sacrilege, but if you can achieve the instrument... I mean, this is about your miking techniques, really, that if you can achieve the same quality of that instrument you know that's what really matters because if you heard it unplugged you'd go wow what beautiful sound listen to strings they're playing themselves that's why you get guys that you know they spend half an hour tuning and they look at each other and go ah. <laughs> when they finish that's just the tuning you know um simply red in 87 they bought me 15 italian suits showing off they were going we're gonna take you shopping we're gonna show you clothes you've never had <laughs> anyway, whatever. Um, then I got an invite to Buckingham Palace from the Queen. This is the funniest thing ever. You know, I'm in London, seeing some bird in London I was going out with at the time, and then my dad phones me up. I thought, oh, it's my dad, what am I going to say? <laughs> <We're gonna have laughs> to. And he phones me, going, what is this? There's a letter here from the Queen. <laughs> but, uh, it was packaged properly, embossed and everything. And I, it's just from the Queen. He says, um, I said, Open it, Dad. And he goes, oh, I already have. <laughs> <laughs> as, as, you know, parents do. They open it up. He says, oh, it's invitation. She wants you to come for tea. <laughs> Winding me up. But I got this invite and stood there shoulder to shoulder with, like, Brian May and Clapton and, and um, Thingy Gibbs from Bee Gees and, you know, you name it, Andrew Lloyd Webber and his birds. <laughs> I forgot the names, you know, the, the singers. Oh. So, uh <laughs> And they're all like looking at me like, who are you? <laughs> it did literally feel like that. Who are you? But I was happy as Larry, because that up to me, you know, I represent. I'm just like, I'm a kid from Longside, M13. I'm here, right? <laughs> I, I was invited, here's the invitation, right? <laughs> Not that I'm a big fan of the Queen, but I just wanted to see the toilets where uh, McCartney and uh, Lennon had, the, had that bifter. That's <laughs> 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 all I kept asking the guards, I was saying, is that the toilet where uh, McCartney had to <laughs> build that bifter and <laughs> so, uh, then you get into this world of signature equipment. So this guy in actually in Lancashire um, um, built me my first amp with my logo on it, and everything was tailored to my. And that is actually burgundy snakeskin. <laughs> this geezer here. Um, he looks a bit of a batty boy, but he's not the. He's <laughs> actually quite. He's, he's a fun, fun, fun guy. He's the lead singer of Marillion, and uh, he just took a shine. Well, he took a shine to me, as you can see. Anyway, <laughs> but um, he just loved the idea of me playing not the conventional scales, you know. tend to play conventional, you know, because everybody knows the notes. You know, those kind of, especially guitarists who are notorious for, you know. You know, the, who doesn't play? What pub do you not go in? And, <laughs> and that's what you get. So, but now your worlds are different, aren't they? Because you go, which is the right scale for this tune? And you pick the right scale in, or you make one up, or you'll get to arpeggiate the notes within a grouping that you like, and that's fantastic. See, I'm a, I'm a converted guitarist, as you can tell. I, I try to keep an open mind. I'm not the person that, oh, music is rubbish, because of electronic music, it's not really music, is it? That's an absolute garbage, you know? The fact that the interface has changed doesn't make it rubbish. It just means that the creative mind has a different set of tools and that's what you've got. You've got a different set of tools 
for letting your creativity out. And you're getting complex within the control factors, the, exp you know, like I was saying, the assignments and the real-time movement of any parameter. How easy is, I don't know machine too well, but uh, uh, how easy on Ableton is it to assign, you know, any parameter to a, to a movement? Um, it's absolutely amazing. I'm just flabbergasted because it took me ages to be able to assign things. Um, um, th sorry. I mean, these boxes here, these even ties, that is actually in a parallel mixer. But this is a, uh, a hardware parallel mixer right here, this thing called the wet box. So it's running to, it has in the loop, it's running that principle of uh, keeping the dry signal dry, but sending to the effects unit. I mean, it's the quality of th those reverbs on there, you know. I just, you know, I'm sending to the effects unit and it's coming back in its par parallel channel. It's great, especially for things there. strange scale that and then play the notes I, I like to get technical about some things because that's where my mindset is actually at even though we're talking you know fame and fortune but the music itself s check the notes out for this that's an A I'm just playing around them so you can get the feel of the tonality of So there's all the notes. But the key is there. I could go. I don't know the name of it. I nicked it off a film. <laughs> I nicked it off a Bollywood film. It was a beautiful tra um, film with the soundtrack written by A. R. Rahman, one of the greatest composers from India, who's getting you know film credits left, right, and centre now. Film scores all the time. <laughs> but the beauty of this is, you think it's so it's in A. But I could play a semitone up. One semitone up from there, and you'd recognise. <laughs> so if I, let me. Let, it's easier this way to just go. It's not easier that way, is it? I'm just trying to show you that I'm playing a semitone up in this conventional. <laughs> and I, it's only because I drew the notes out, <laughs> I drew a neck, and I put the notes on, and then I said, hang on, that looks like a pentatonic shape. <laughs> I'm just 
trying to show you that you scales cross over, that you find scales within scales. So it's good to try and cross over scales as much as it is to go, oh, that's the right same key and so forth. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm see, I, I can't read or write music, so I can't tell you about m the modes and so forth. All I know is that, yes, they do kind of go, well, here's a scale, but if you start the scale on the next note, and it becomes another scale and another scale if you start on the next note, and that's how you get them. But um, different countries have different kinds of scales and ragas, and sometimes they're... They're the same, but they're actually just missing out notes. So maybe you could try, when you're playing your melodies and so forth, try missing out notes instead of putting all the notes in of a scale. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, I'll keep it straight. Yeah. So... Okay, everyone knows that kind of sound. That, those notes. Now I'm going to miss out that note, and I'm going to miss out and that note. I'm going to miss that out, and it's going to sound like this now. The jumps are there now, isn't it? It's the same scale, but because I've missed out the note. It's taken on this kind of beautiful. <laughs> and the application is what it's about. I mean, if I just play something, let's go back to so, you know, conventional rhythm. Who hasn't heard something that goes? But you know, that kind of thing. No, let's do something a bit cooler. too much on things like that but you see that how I think is that you know you've played something conventional but then you start messing with it and the same way that you would probably I hope you know that uh, you're not just following what somebody else, that you saw on YouTube you're doing your own thing you've got your own idea in your head your own music.